Welcome to a beginner's guide to LED walls in live production. In this video, we're going to pull out some key learnings from an interview we did with LED expert Stefan Svard from Thor AV. Was LED wall technology taking center stage in live productions thanks to mega hits like The Mandalorian on Disney Plus? It's our hope that this info really equips you and your team to begin the discussion on whether or not adding an LED wall to your live production is the right thing to do. But in the case of image magnification, where you've got a pasture on the stage and then you've got a camera on the pasture going through all of your video switching equipment and then up on a screen, you don't want it to look like a bad kung fu movie yeah. where you know there's a lot of delay there. And with pixel pitch, the furthest viewer doesn't matter. It's the closest viewer that does. And as you're getting down into, let's say, the two millimeter range, now your viewing distance is drop from let's say 20 feet down to maybe 15 or 12 maybe. The screen size has to do with how far away your furthest viewer is. If you've got viewers that are 100 plus feet away, you don't want a 12 foot wide screen. You're probably gonna want something that's, you know, 20 feet or 24 feet wide. Very, very few churches or live environments uh, are gonna wanna, I'll say, deal with both the cost and the total amount of pixels in let's say a 1.8 or 1.5 millimeter. On camera, there's really too many variables to say, well, you need X pixel pitch based on you know a Sony or a Canon or Panasonic camera because the lensing matters, where you're at with your f-stop, what your depth of field is, all of that. All of those play a huge part in how it's all gonna work. So what I would say your best bet there is to just do either an on-camera demo or look to somebody who's already using, you know, the type of product or the type of camera that, that you're wanting to do. The amount of horsepower behind the panel is what really matters for on-camera performance as well as low brightness performance. If the, if the camera shutter speed is this long and that pixel is allowed to blink a hundred times within that one camera shutter, you're going to get a hundred different steps of grayscale between on and off. But now if you cut the scan ratio in half, maybe you only get 50 blinks per LED per camera shutter, which now means your grayscale is cut in half. And what you're going to start to see is you're going to start to see banding, uh, where you go from, let's say, orange to red. Instead of a nice, beautiful gradient, it's like orange or you know yellow, orange, red with hard kind of gradient lines, both in color and grayscale. Um, and you just get a lot of garbage. In the same size screen, the tighter the pixel pitch you go, the higher the resolution. Now, if your screen size is going smaller and smaller and you still wanna have full resolution, you need that tighter pixel pitch. But if the screen's gonna be 60 feet wide and your viewing distances are such that you don't need a 1.8, then the 3.9 is just fine. A processor might be able to manage 2.1 million or, or 4 million or 9 million pixels. And if let's say you did a 80 foot wide LED screen all out of 1.8 millimeter, I mean, you're going to be well beyond the pixel capacity of a processor. So you're going to need multiple processors and then you're going to need some sort of mothership to manage, you know, 18 million pixels. Well, you know, and you're scaling all your content up to that. Um, so a lot of people, again, it's kind of like bragging rights. Yeah. If if I have, you know, 2,000 horsepower, but my car weighs 200,000 pounds, so what? Conversely, if I have 2,000 horsepower and the car weighs 500 pounds, I'm never going to get any traction. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. again, I'm a car nerd. So <laughs> it, it's balancing. You need to balance that so you can, you know, manage the pixels, manage the content, and also have it look good on camera. Yeah. And, you know, not spend uh, too much money. Historically, LED walls have all operated at, you know, the typical slow video frame rate. And people talk about, and that's video frame rate versus LED refresh rate. So there's, there's two different things, but they're like tied together. Because if your video frame is 1 60th of a second, the LED needs to refresh, it needs to blink multiple times in order to get gradient. Because LEDs are never on half brightness. They're only on half time, okay? So the LEDs are all blinking, but in order to reduce brightness, 
you're just turning it on for a shorter and shorter amount of time and then it's off the rest of the time. So absolutely it matters. Even if you want your content to play it, let's say 24 frames or something to get a cinematic look, there's a look that you're trying to create as an artist. And then there's what the LED screen can actually do both to the human eye and on camera. This is the module and it has a connector on the back that connects to you know the, the rest of the, of the panel and inside of that panel, you're going to have a receiving card. And that receiving card is either going to be, you know, Novastar, which is, you know, the most common, um, Brompton. There are a few other processing platforms, but it's really a little bit like PC versus Mac. If I kind of put it in the world of creatives, um, Novastar is kind of like the PC of the world. It's the most common. It's pretty affordable. It does the job. And, and really, you know, the Novastar stuff works quite well. Um, Brompton is a bit more of the Mac mindset, so it does cost more. It has simply more features, options. It's faster, better, you know. When we've done the Brompton next to, and again, it's not just Novastar, but either Color Light or others, uh, we're typically one to two frames faster. So the processing platform you're gonna wanna choose from the get-go and you know, really be educated on, on what options exist within that processing platform. When the LED is made, it's made like a big, huge sausage. And then they slice it into wafers. And then think of that wafer as a pizza. And the inside of that pizza is where all the goo and the goodness is. And the outer edge is where it's burnt, right? So the middle of the pizza is where you get true blue. And as you get to the outside edge is where you get like cyan instead of blue and they chop that thing up into little, you know, the pixels that go into the LEDs. And the middle is what you call A grade material. And as you get to the outer and outer rings, you get B, C, and D grade material. And if you're going with a low cost manufacturer, the, the, the pixels themselves are the most expensive part of the panel because there's tons of them. Um, so the thing is, is the, the matching, you know, Thor uses A grade, gold wired LEDs for all of our product. And if there's an LED panel, it's half the price of ours. They exist, they're out there. They're using C or D grade LEDs. So the matching between them is gonna be significantly different than the matching between batch to batch in let's say a Thor panel or another premium you know, brand. Um, where the matching really comes into play is if you have a panel here and a panel here, and they're right next to each other, right? They're, they're linked together. You're gonna see that difference. But if you've got a screen in the center of the room and a screen on the side of the room, no one's gonna see if they're off by a couple nanometers, unless you're Coca-Cola or Ferrari and you want that red to be absolutely perfect red that matches the car that's on the stage, right? So with a slight color difference, that's where Brompton, you can actually insert a LUT into the processor and you can say, I wanna use this color triangle, here's how I wanna deal with it. You can literally take two batches of panels that might have a slightly different color triangle and you can click a button that says uh, maximum achievable. So it overlaps those color triangles and says, you know what, between these two panels, here's what I can achieve. So they're both gonna display that, so they're gonna match. Novastar does not have that option at this point. So that's a Brompton feature at this point. Now, at some point that may come available, but if they're separate screens and they're separated by feet, different batches, that's okay. But if it's one screen, different batches, that's where not suggested. And there you have it, a crash course on LED walls and how this powerful technology can really enhance your live productions. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, this is the way.